Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another exclusive interview presented by Garnet Trust. I'm Kendall Smith, joined alongside of Will Sanders today. You all know him. He's a pitcher for the University of South Carolina baseball team. Will, how's it going today? Good. Happy to be here on a beautiful uh, Friday. It is a Friday indeed, and today starts the Georgia series for South Carolina. So big game coming up tonight, tomorrow, and Sunday as well. We will see you on the bump this weekend too. And Will, in the midweek series, or the midweek game, I should say, against North Carolina, you all had a pretty big win, 15-2 to two in Charlotte. So first of all, how does a win like that kind of set you up for this weekend? And is it a little bit sweeter to beat a team like North Carolina when you kind of go for that title of who's the real Carolina? It felt good as a team to uh, bounce back from Missouri. We didn't end how we wanted to Saturday and then rolled on to Sunday. But uh, it was good for our bats to kind of click together. And we only had one home run. And it was from Jack Mahoney, who usually doesn't hit a lot of home runs. But uh, it was good just playing baseball, playing the game hard. We made a couple errors, but uh, everybody just played together. And our pitching looked good. And so that was good to just create that energy and hopefully bring it into this weekend against Georgia. So playing Georgia this weekend, we're kind of getting towards the midway part of the season, which is crazy to think about. So up until this point, Will, what is one thing that you're proud of yourself for this season? And then what's one thing you kind of want to work on as we get to the back half of the games? I'd say the uh, biggest thing that I'm proud of individually for me is I've made seven starts and six of those starts, I put the team in a position to win. And uh, Tennessee, I'm not going to be the only pitcher who has their shaky outing against them because they are very good but uh I think I've done my job so far through the first half of the season to just go out there and try to win the game and help our defense stay in the game and just pitch well and uh now I got seven more starts to go and just try to win the game that I pitch Will, you have pitched very well this season. You have the lowest ERA on the team. And like I said, you'll be back out there this weekend against Georgia. I want to ask you some fun questions, kind of get to know you a little bit better. Maybe not some so serious baseball questions, if that's good with you. So are you down for like some rapid fire type questions? Yep, let's get it going. Okay, so you are number 32. Why is that your number, Will? Well, this is a kind of a long extent well, it's okay it doesn't have to be a rapid answer I'll just ask rapid <laughs> questions <laughs> we uh coach Kingston I really wanted to be number six because that's what I wore in high school but George Khalil was six and so the two options were 32 or zero and I thought as a freshman if I got lit up hit pretty hard wearing the number zero that would not be very cool so I chose 32 and my catcher from uh, middle school he's always been a South Carolina fan and his favorite number was 32. So it was meaningful and uh, looks good and feels good on me. So I love that. That's awesome. And before you pitch, Will, do you have any like ritual that you have to go through before you start every single time? I'd say listen to some pretty strange music and stretch my body. Maybe some Katy Perry or some Doja Cat. Just <laughs> get locked in. You talk about strange music, and that reminds me of last year. You kind of went famous for your hoedown, throwdown quote. I remember you talked about how you, like, enjoyed that song so much. So um, why was that song so special to you last year? And then when you're talking about Katy Perry and Doja Cat, what are the songs from those two artists that you really like? I liked Hoedown, Throwdown because my sister and I would always watch Hannah Montana growing up, and watching that movie, just the song was always a cool part of that movie. And so it meant to me that even though I'm away from her and my family, that they're still a part of me, they're still with me. And so the first couple of outings, freshman year, that's the song I would use because it was like a, almost a bringing up of the confidence. And so just getting used to it and now they're still with me, but I don't need to play the song that is not very good. But uh, Doja Cat, I mean, I don't know. I just like the rhythm. And that's the thing that it's not strange music. It's just, it's a type of rhythm that helps me get in contact with my body and just feel and flow down the mound, which helps me be successful. What is your favorite genre of music? I'd say pop. Just like a good sing-along, a vibe. You can't, can't beat that. Have you ever done karaoke before? Are you a singer? I have done karaoke, but uh, the story does not need to be told about that. 
<laughs> okay, we'll leave that one maybe for another time. Will, what is your favorite color? I like baby blue. Okay, so like we're not gonna say Tar Heel blue, but no, but like a uh, sky blue. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Um, when it's your birthday, what is your go-to cake flavor? It was my birthday last week, and I did not have a cake. That I'm is not, not big. Right. I'm not. I'm not big on that type of stuff. I mean, if there's a a good cookie cake, that's that's where it's at. I agree. That is ten out of ten. Did you turn twenty last week? I did. Happy belated birthday, everybody! Give Will a shout out in the comments, the Insiders Forum. Happy birthday to you! Uh, what is your favorite animal, Will? My favorite Besides animal, Gamecock, of course. Maybe a mountain lion. Okay. That'd be pretty cool. I like it. That's different. Uh, what do you do on your off days? I like to swim and I like to go on walks, and that's that's kind of the biggest thing that I tarnish on myself while I'm not at the field is, or not tarnish, but keep myself on track to just keep moving my body, be the most flexible, be the most consistent and uh, be able to go ex long extents. I know that some pitchers are into yoga, like hot yoga. I remember the Cubs put in a yoga studio for Jake Arietta when he played there a few years back. Um, do you ever do yoga? Because you talk about keeping your body kind of moving. Is that a thing that you implement into your training? Yoga is a very big part of my life. Okay, gotcha. I love it. I'm a yoga teacher, so That's it is cool. a big yoga part of my is, life as well. It helps everybody. It really does. I think people don't think it's that hard, but then once you get into it, especially if you're doing hot yoga, like it is a grind and it's a workout and it gets you right and flexible and trained, so... I recommend it to anybody for sure. Um, masters are happening right now. You are actually from the state of Georgia. You're from Atlanta. Have you ever uh, been to the Masters? I know it's kind of a hard ticket to get, but being from Georgia, you know, sometimes people go. And then do you keep up with golf or do you golf yourself? I have not been to the Masters, but my parents have been a couple times and my sister has been a couple times. But uh, I'm into golf. I play sometimes, but I'm not a very big advocate on it I mean I like to watch I like Tiger Woods I think the biggest thing that I take from the sport of golf and the players that I watch is just the way they attack everything because golf is such an individual sport and it's really how good can I get myself at this game and same with pitching like if you're very good at golf let's say Tiger Woods he played his first round yesterday he probably shot 72 shots each shot is like a pitch it doesn't, it doesn't go off of each other. You have to be able to separate each pitch, each shot, no matter how good it is, how bad it is. It doesn't affect the next pitch. And so that's what – that's it's a mental approach, and it helps me keep my mind in line. Wow. That's a really good way to think about it. I've never thought about it that way, but now that you mention it, it, it does make sense, kind of comparing, you know, living and dying off of literally every single – pitch or shot that you take, whether you're playing baseball or golf. Will, what professional pitchers do you really look up to? Like when you were growing up, was there not one pitcher in the MLB that you were like, that is my inspiration? I've got a couple different ones. I mean, I feel like I'm a pretty sporadic person and able to uh, be influenced by a lot of different things and how people move and do things. So Johnny Cueto sticks out the first because he doesn't have any off the chart stuff, but he is very deceptional. And so he beats hitters by messing with their timing. And so that's what I would do in high school when I didn't throw super hard is just figure out ways to beat them by decepting them. Max Scherzer is just a competitor and that's, he attacks, he's a bulldog. And Marcus Stroman I really like because he went to Duke, my dad went to Duke and uh, he's a big, two seam pitcher same with Johnny Cueto but uh that's something that I've really worked on the last couple of months is getting my two seam right to get to be able to beat right on right uh hitters and getting it under their barrel watching Marcus Stroman do that is help me so you have pitchers that you look up to and then I'm sure lots of kids who are playing baseball look up to you and they want to be in a position like you someday. So if you were to give a piece of advice to a younger kid, whether they're in high school, middle school, little league, what advice would you get, give them to get where you are today? You know, I had this opportunity to uh, 
go to LSU my sophomore year of high school. And I saw this kid, it was Thanksgiving break. I saw this kid named Jake Slaughter, who was a freshman at the time. And he was the only one there just walking into the batting cage to get some extra swings. And I was nervous, scared to talk to him. So my dad asked him, he was like, what's one thing that you could say to Will to influence his life? And Jake looked at me and said, always do more than what you think is enough. And so that, since that day has kind of run my life and, and showed me and taught me what I want to do and how bad I want to work and what, what I need to do to be successful. And so I think people need to manage their time correctly, understand what's important to them, create a goal and obtain that goal. It's a great piece of advice. And I think that works for any area of life, whether it's baseball or something else that someone is pursuing, always work harder than what you think you need to do. I love it. Will, I want you to do some team superlatives for me. So I'm going to give you like, uh, you know, team clown, stuff like that. Ask you who on the team you think would best fit those awards. Are you good with that? Okay. Yeah. All right. So team clown, I asked Andrew Eister this one. And I want to see if you do have the same answer. So who do you think it is? Team Clown, I bet we do have the same answer. I'm going to go with David Cromer. He said Jack Mahoney. Wow. I guess, yeah, Jack. David, is they're the same, but yes. Okay. So I've never met Jack, but I have met David because I interviewed him all summer when he was playing college football okay. baseball where I worked at the Blowfish. And uh, yeah, he's, he's pretty funny. So I think I could agree with that one. But again, I can't really, you know, say whether Jack is or not because I've never met him. Um, most fashionable on the team. <laughs> the most fashionable let's go with julian bosnick he's always got some he's got some cool stuff going on always all right interesting uh most likely to become tiktok famous you have any tiktokers let's go with talmage lee Croy. all right he's got some good dance moves uh most talkative on the team who can always strike up a conversation jack mahoney <laughs> there we go okay best walk-up song who wins the award brant belk Yes, the leadoff, yep. first song, like when you're out there, bottom of the first inning, if you're at home, I, I agree. Brant Belk has a really good one. In too deep. Yes, I love it. All right, Will, this weekend, like we said, against Georgia, first game is tonight at Founders Park. What is it going to take for this team to get a sweep over the Bulldogs this weekend? We're going to have to play good. We're going to have to play together, and we're going to have to limit our mistakes. Georgia's a very good ball team, and uh, – they know how to play the game the right way. And so we just, we got to play our game and keep the energy up and do all the right things. Well, Will, I appreciate you joining us on this exclusive interview presented by Garnet Trust. Best of luck this weekend. And it was fun getting to talk to you and get to know you a little better. Thanks, nice, ma'am. Thank you, Kendall.